The Liberals are in the midst of their fourth leadership campaign in just 10 years. The party's presence in the House of Commons is at historic lows, and it seems like the candidates running for the top job are betting that the only way from here is up. What's the record of past Liberal leaders and what chances do the future ones have? Well, here is your weekly West Block Primer. Since Confederation, the Liberal Party has been known to produce leaders whose legacies last decades after they've left office. Lester Pearson introduced universal health care and the Canadian flag. Pierre Trudeau, who despite all the controversy, gave Canada the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And the little guy from Shawinigan, who brought the Liberals three consecutive majority governments. But the turn of the century also turned the party's fortunes, and since then, they've struggled to produce any rising stars. Paul Martin made it to the top job, but the sponsorship scandal eclipsed any chances he had for a lengthy term as Prime Minister. Stéphane Dion was sucked into the black hole of carbon taxes. And Michael Ignatieff, for all of his apparent star power, never took off under the weight of the Conservative attack ads. So now the seat is empty again, and at least six people want it. The fuse that leads to either stardom or dud has been lit. Well, joining me now is, from Toronto is Liberal leadership hopeful Martha Hall Findlay. Uh, welcome uh, to the program. Good to have you back on, Martha. Uh, oh, let me start back, off huh? on this note. This is not the first time that you've run for the leadership of the federal Liberal Party. Uh, but since the last time, you lost your seat. And now you're asking the party to make you leader. Can you square that circle for me? Sure. Well, since the last time, I actually won two elections, held four shadow cabinet portfolio sen senior ones. And yes, 2011 was a very difficult time for a whole lot of us. I am one of 43 members of parliament who lost their jobs in 2011. A really good group of people, some incredibly talented, capable, hardworking people who should still be in, par in Ottawa and still be on Parliament Hill. That's exactly why I'm running, Tom. I mean, you're right. I ran in 2006. And we had a great group of candidates who were saying all the right things about what the party needed to do, what, the, what was needed for the country. I mean, we saw what was happening with Stephen Harper. We now have another group of great candidates, um, all saying what does the party need, what does the country need, but, but we've been there before. And the challenge that I see now is that the difference between 2006 and now is that what we've really done is managed to lose two more elections. And as you've rightly pointed out, 2011 was terrible for the Liberal Party. So we, well, can't, me, just keep yeah. we can't just keep talking. We can't just keep saying the same things that we said in 2006. We have to start getting things done, and we have to start standing up for what we believe. The only way we're going to regain the trust and confidence of Canadians is to stop trying to be everything to everybody and actually say, this is what we stand for, and we're going to stand for it, and we're going to well, take the fight to Harper. I, I want to get into what those stands are in just a second, Martha, mm -hmm. but I, I wanted to ask you, one of the other challenges that you face internally in this race are polls showing that Justin Trudeau, were he to become yeah. the next Liberal leader, uh, would win government, either majority or minority. The polls aren't as kind to you on that count as they are to Justin Trudeau, but how do you address that elephant in the room, this, this enormous candidacy of Justin Trudeau? Well, Tom, there's a huge difference between celebrity and what will actually happen after April and what will happen in 2015. I mean, you know, Justin and Mark Garneau and I all bring very different things to the table. The combination is terrific, quite honestly, and it bodes really well for the future of the party. But we also know what polls said about a whole lot of different leaders in, in early days, right? What Liberals are going to have to be really aware of is what's going to happen after April 14th and what those attack ads are going to be and how devastating Harper is going to try to be, depending on who, en who ends up being the, the, uh, the leader of the party. You know, and if that, my, my hope is that that's me, and I'm more than willing to take Stephen Harper on. And, and in fact, I, as I said earlier, I think we need to take the fight to him. We simply cannot allow those attack ads to continue to define us. But whatever okay. a poll says now, Tom, you know, Whatever a poll says now, it's going to change a month from now. There's going to be a whole lot more attention paid to this leadership race. A whole lot more people will know much more about the individual candidates. And then, of course, Let's, it depends on what happens the, after April 14th. 
Let me jump in and let our viewers find out a little bit more about what you think on a certain number of issues. We've got a rapid fire round here. I'm going to give you a subject. <laughs> give me it back in, in one sentence. We're going to ask these very same questions to all the Liberal leadership candidates that we have on the show. So number one is this. Should British Columbia be compensated for having a pipeline run through its province? But from private sector, not from other provinces. Okay. Would you that change was quick Canada's... Talk. Well, no, I mean, this is rapid fire round. You get one shot well, but, at it. But, but, but British Columbia is looking at certain challenges, and it should actually manage to figure out to make sure that it manages its affairs properly. But the private sector is the one that's trying to put the pipeline through. It should be the private sector that's engaged in whatever compensation or, or mediation or preparation is needed. Okay. Would you change Canada's generic drug laws and increase the cost of pharmaceuticals here in order to get the European trade deal? There are a whole lot of factors, you know, Tom, in the trade deal. There's not just one thing. There are a number of issues, and it's a give and take on all of them. We would love to see more access to generic drugs simply because we know that that's less expensive for our overall health care system. But you also know that's not a short answer question because we have intellectual property regime re uh, requirements that encourage the research that's needed for the, for the patent-based uh, drug companies. Okay. I want to get through the rest of them very quickly here. Democratic reform, should the electoral system stay the same or should we change it to something else uh, rep by prop? We absolutely should change it. I've been a supporter of some form of proportional representation for years and years and years, and this I've been consistent. Um, I would, I think the, probably the most li likely thing to happen that would actually get passed would be some pro form of a preferential ballot so that no MP is elected until he or she wins uh, 50 plus votes. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap up the lightning round on that. Martha Hall of Finlay, thanks very much for being here. Always good to have you on the show.